Hey guys, it's Matt Miller with American Wire, and today we're looking at a clip that if all Americans saw this, Donald Trump would win the election in a heartbeat because it dispels the Democrats' biggest allegation against Trump which is that he's a racist. Watch how these black community leaders and especially this black pastor embraces Trump. And what happens next is incredible. You got to check it out. President Trump, I'm so humble that you would be here. President Obama never came to the hood, so to speak, right? <laughs> President Joe Biden, he went to the big NAACP dinner, but he never came to the hood. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our community is disenfranchised, we're marginalized, we're pushed aside. And there are two things that are happening with crime and employment. You're an entrepreneur. How do you see funding entrepreneurs specifically keeping the black dollar in the black community? Let me explain. If I want to eat, I have to give my money to the Albanians at Coney Island. If you want to get gas, you need to go to the Chaldeans. If you want to have your hair look like mine, you got to go to Asians. And I thank God for Asians. My wife is right there. She's Asian. Our children are Blasian. So I give it up to my Asian brothers and sisters. But we don't keep the black dollar in the black community. You're an entrepreneur. What does it look like for black entrepreneurs to be able to get the resources they need so we don't look for a handout, but a hand up? And, and you know, and we talk about this, you have a lot of dollars in the black community and they don't keep it. I think one of the biggest problems that I see is the crime. They have to stop the crime. If they stop the crime, you're going to see more and more stores sprout. And we're losing them in other communities, too, where there's crime. They just you see empty stores. You see them all over. They see big stores they moved in 10 years ago. They spent millions of dollars to build it, and now they're leaving. And uh, these are not necessarily black communities. In many cases, they're not at all. But where there's crime, there's empty stores, and you don't keep the money. So I think the biggest thing we can do is stop the crime. We're going to stop the crime. We have to let people yeah. feel free and, and be able to walk outside and not even think about being mugged or hit or shot or anything. And, uh, you know, one of the examples, I see the love in this church. It's incredible what you've done. You've done an incredible job. I would like to ask if you could final out with a prayer. Does that make, is that okay? I don't want to get you by surprise here because this was not, but I've heard so much about you and so many great things. And it's such an honor to be here. It's such an incredible honor. and with so many of my friends that are political leaders that are really going places, and he is on the list, by the way, and I don't know if he's going to make it, but he's, he's on a list of a few people, right? Not too many people. Would you like to be VP? Yeah. Uh, I think one thing, he'd be a good one, too. But I'd love to ask you to finish off with a prayer. Does that make sense? I would love to pray. Let thank us, you very much. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, fifth, the 45th President of the United States of America. He was charged with 34 felonies. Then he raised 53 million in 24 hours. And he has the potential to be the 47th President of the United States of America. You have protected him from things seen and unseen. You have protected his family. We pray for his wife, his children. But Father, we ask that late in the midnight hour that you would speak to him. We pray that you might visit him with wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We ask that even when he deals with complex problems that you might give him the ability to hear your still small voice. Father, we ask that you might lift his hands up so that our country perhaps would be great again. And we believe specifically for black America that you would make black America great again. Because Lord, we realize we haven't always been this way. So we pray that righteousness would begin to roll like water and justice like a mighty stream. And we thank you that you're able to do it because we believe that there are promises that you have through this president. And we believe that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine in his life and in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So Donald Trump visited a Detroit black church this week, and he had an amazing experience there. As you can see, um, he prayed with the black pastor and the entire room embraced this guy. The entire room loved this guy. We heard since Donald Trump ran for president in 2016 that uh, how racist the guy is and that he's uh, xenophobic. He doesn't like immigrants. He doesn't like black people, all this stuff. And the left wing media has been so adamant and insisting that Donald Trump is a white supremacist and he's a fascist and all these things. We've heard that over and over and over again, but it just doesn't square. I mean, look at this clip as an example of him being embraced by black community leaders and he fits right in. He's, he's right there at home. He's treating everyone with respect. They're treating him with respect. And this is not a standalone clip. We see there's tons of examples of Trump visiting minority communities, black communities, Hispanic communities, and he is, has nothing but love for them. Um, it's because this whole narrative in the media, of course, is fabricated. It's not based on reality. Um, Donald Trump, because he wants to control the border, meaning he wants to stop the, uh, the criminal enterprises that are active down there, the cartels who are doing human trafficking and drug trafficking and other uh, damaging things for American communities, uh, he wants to stop that. He wants to control who comes into this country so we know who they are. We don't want foreign nationals that may be from hostile uh, nations coming into our country unmitigated and unchecked uh, to the point where we don't even know who's in our country. That's pretty, that's an industry standard thing. Every single country, it's, it's a global standard that every country has the right to control its borders and have a border and enforce it and actually tell people, no, you can't come in yet or no, you can't come in. You have a criminal record or you're you're from uh, a country that wants to to blow us up. So, um, you know, we're going to we're going to give you a background check. We're going to see and make sure you're not a North Korean spy or a Iranian terrorist or something like that. Uh, every country has that right and enforces that right. It's not racist to just say we're going to have a border and we're going to have control of it. Uh, but it's kind of the the low hanging fruit that the media they chose and they stuck with since the beginning. And um, I think most people who are paying attention by now know that this is all BS. They know that Trump is, uh, is very friendly with minority communities. And a lot of minority communities really resonate with Trump's message because, uh, you know, a large part of that message is conservative, culturally conservative uh, signaling. Uh, and like, for instance, the Hispanic community is very culturally conservative. They're Catholic. They're immigrants. They're not into woke ideology and radical left wing thinking. A lot of them actually have fled radical left wing uh, governments, socialist governments, and come to America for freedom and democracy and capitalism. Same thing with the black community. The black community is culturally very conservative. They are very traditional. They, they are Christian and they're not super into the woke gender bending um, pseudo communist sort of thinking. So when they hear Donald Trump and they hear the people in Donald Trump's, uh, his camp, his political camp talk, they actually resonate with him. They're like, wait a second, you sound like us. You, you represent our ideas. And, um, you know, it, it, it's the left wing media's tried and failed attempt to paint this guy as a racist has been one of the most spectacular fumbles in in uh, political history, American political history, in my opinion. And uh, also the, the unwillingness or inability to pivot and, and kind of uh, cut their losses. Once they've chosen a narrative that's so uh, blatantly false and they decide to stick with it and keep beating that drum, it's just, it's cringeworthy at this point. Now here is the fact of the matter is that Trump is an older guy, he's white, he is from you know an old school mindset, and I don't think he is a woke progressive in any sense at all. He's the opposite of that. Um, however, that doesn't make him racist. It doesn't make him an enemy to black people or Hispanic people or other minority groups. And the only thing that's even remotely uh, sounds like it could be that, but upon further examination, definitely isn't, is wanting to control the border. There's so many 
Great reasons to want to control the border. Just ask the people who are suffering in border communities right now or in sanctuary cities, even, even New York City, which is a sanctuary city. It's, it's uh, rampant problems that are caused by unmitigated migration. They don't know what to do with all these migrants. Uh, they don't have room for them. They can't. So, uh, so of course, hopefully now they would agree that there's good reason to control the border and the influx of people, the volume uh, of people coming in. What I'm trying to say is we need to understand that the media has its agenda and uh, we need to see it for what it is. It's a bought and paid for narrative that the powers that be want the media to push. They want them to stick with that. It doesn't mean just because you hear it on CNN or MSNBC or even Fox News that it's rooted in reality. We need to think for ourselves here. We need to use our own eyes to see and decide for ourselves. Is this man a racist? Um, you know, look at the many other videos on this channel that that are standout moments where Trump is in a setting where he's not surrounded by white people. And watch this guy decide for yourself. Is he a racist? Uh, or do these people resonate with him and love him for his message and what he stands for? So anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this clip in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.